assuming you guys want to build a uh, an agency that is simple, easy, takes out the complexity and overwhelm, if that's you, raise your hand either like this on camera, or you can even do the fancy little digital emoji. All right, they're coming in. Everybody's coming in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so I'm starting off with this. This is one of our awesome MVP gals, uh, Tammy, and she posted in the group last week a really awesome post. But here is the premise today. It's not just about growing. It's about growing smart and sustaining the high profit margin lifestyle agency we all dream of. I've had a successful agency for five years and lost sight of this a long time ago. For anyone feeling the pinch of agency overwhelm, this program is a beacon of hope. The practical wisdom and the straightforward approach to cracking the scale, uh, the scaling code are eye-opening. And quite frankly, what we're talking about today, okay, this is a new agency model. You won't hear anybody talking about this model anywhere else on the internet, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But we're not about overwhelming crap. We're not about a ton of confusing things, all right? And we're not about just dumping our money into time. And quite frankly, most of you are wasting your money with time right now, okay? But you're also wasting money on things as well, of course, right? We just want to build a simple, high profit, easy to fulfill agency, all right? We'll go ahead and mute the people who don't know how to take instructions. Just kidding. I love y'all. All right. So let's start here. Come on, Sam. There we go. I believe this to be a fact. Okay. And if you agree with me, just give me a one in the chat. Agency owners today are more confused than ever. Okay. It's been six months. I still don't have any clients. I love the platform open to all suggestions, blah, 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 blah. Here's another one. I started this SaaS thing about seven months ago. I am not getting anything. And here's another one. I'm completely disappointed with myself right now. It's been six months, not having GHL. I've done all this crap. Here's a fun one, right? Obviously, nobody has, has answers to this, but look at this. What is the secret sauce that people are not sharing to reach a certain goal? How many of you guys feel like there is a secret sauce? Give me a one in the chat. I should probably pull the chat up so I can see. Give me a one in the chat if you feel like there is a secret sauce. There's no wrong answer here. I'm just curious. Oh, man. All right, a lot of ones rolling in. All right, so we got the ones rolling in, and then we have people like this giving answers. Oh, try video marketing. Okay, well, well, sounds good. I'll, I'll try some video marketing. Maybe that's the way, right? I've been doing LinkedIn lead generation since 2020. It's the best, blah, blah, blah. Great. It's a numbers game. How many of you guys have heard it's a numbers game, right? Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. I don't think there's, you know, falsehood necessarily. Numbers are. But the reality is, you guys, none of these are the answer. None of these are the answer. And you guys are here today because we purport to have an answer, right? But I want to tell you how that came to be because it didn't just kind of, you know, arrive one day all by itself. In fact, back in 2023, I was looking at our churn numbers for Upex. What responsible business owner doesn't look at their churn numbers? We should, right? And I found some really interesting and one very problematic thing, okay? We have three price points. And if you guys are Upex users, how many Upex users we got here? Give me a one in the chat if you're an Upex user, all right? All right, ones, ones, awesome, okay. All right, sweet. If you're an Upex user, you know, we have three price points. If you have one to three clients, it's 97 bucks. If you have uh, four to 10, it's 297. And then 11 to infinity and beyond. Nobody's hit infinity yet. I'm waiting for somebody to do that. 11 to infinity and beyond is 497 a month. Well, I don't think it would surprise anybody to know that at the 297 and 497, we have very good churn, meaning when people get customers, they don't typically churn out, right? However, the $97 price point is where people struggle. And that makes sense. But I wanted to know why. And so I started doing an exit survey and I started talking with our customers. And I found that people fell into one of two buckets. Bucket number one, I have no clients. Well, if you got no clients, you can't pay for anything. I totally understand that. 
you know, that's, I, I get that. Yeah. Bucket number it. two yeah. was a little bit more surprising to me. If you can put the other I'm one. overwhelmed. Right. Guys, please okay. mute. I'm overwhelmed. Okay. And, oh, come on. Boy, were they overwhelmed. I got pages and pages. There's an overwhelmed word right there. And pages of people telling me all of the things that weren't wrong. And in talking to people, I kept hearing this one word, overwhelm, all the time. In fact, go to the high-level group and go to the search bar and put in the word overwhelm. It's a fun exercise. You'll see some cool stuff, okay? And that brings us to where we're at today. All right, now I'm gonna stop sharing here for a minute. I wanna talk to you guys. How many of you guys feel overwhelmed? Yeah? How many of you felt when you started down this path that this was going to be a lot easier than you thought? Okay. Well, then you guys are in the right place. All right. So then <laughs> Eric gives me a double. He actually, he undid his video so he could give me a double hands up. Yes. Overwhelmed is the word. Um, I want to share with you guys something really quick here. And one of the things that kind of bugs me, I'll be honest, is when all people do is share testimonials, but there's a couple of things I want to share with you before we jump into what MVP is and why you would want to be involved in it. All right. So let me just share this real quick. Share sound on the slide. Yes, Sam, you have to share the sound or else it doesn't work. It's a crappy uh, opportunity or experience for everyone else. All right. This is Daniel Nugent. Daniel, are you here right now? If you're here, I know he was uh, thinking of coming. Hey, what's up, Sam? Okay, Daniel, I'm going to play this real quick. And then uh, we'll go to Daniel here in just a second. So thanks for coming, buddy. Appreciate you. Uh, so we've been booking 20 demos call a day for two weeks now. It's a total of, I don't know, what's that, 10, 10 days times 200? Yeah, 200 demo calls. So we did 200 demo calls in two weeks. 68% um, showed up. And like, I would say three out of four took the offer. Uh, so we, we've been busy onboarding, just closing deals. Um, but it's been, it's been great, man. I mean... I never felt like this in my past four years of being an entrepreneur and being like a funnel hacker, you know, from ClickFunnels and buying, you know, and, and picking a new industry and know, not, know nothing about it and figuring out their status quo, do research and research. And then we, when we launched the offer, it bite. It's just like we brought, you know, your you're teaching about yeah you don't want to put a yacht in in a small lake right so i guess i've been building a yacht and now it's in the ocean and it's it's cruising and it's, it's crushing it we're on track to do about four about 440 demo call per month right now um so we should be getting at least 100 new clients per month at this rate um but i'll keep updating you as we go uh but that i've just been busy man with with this offer all right hey what's up guys uh so what i sent sam was um i told him that i've been in the agency space for a few years now and um everything i've done you know like audience industry offer pain point has been pretty surface uh nothing was really deep down and then when I follow Sam uh, Sam's teaching is very like you know the he call it the hyper niche right the, the sub niche of all the niches maybe a, a few level down so I, uh, I I spent some time doing research when I was deciding what niche to go after and um, and then I signed up the MVP that's where he was teaching this is after I finished the Legion U and the agency launch or something, the $300 module. I, I could finish that. And uh, I wanted to know what, how to narrow down my niche even further. 
So I bought MVP um, maybe like three weeks ago. And uh, within like week one and week two, Sam taught uh, like really powerful lessons, like the, the seeing, seeing it for the first time at the hot list uh, by, uh, the, from the Boren letter. Uh, and also the um, uh, the status quo. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So when I deep dive into the status quo, I wasn't sure what that really means. To be frank, I never, um, I never really understood what that means. Uh, and uh, he gave like a bunch of homework to do. It's, it's like a really long homework assignment, a lot of questions to go through. And then you have to validate that with your niche, right? So I went through the training and um, uh, I started learning more about my niche and I feel that it was pretty surface stuff. So I went even you know, like more narrow down to the niche, like a sub niche. And I focus on just one, like one group, right? Uh, it is a lot smaller than the the main, you know, industry. Um, but maybe it narrowed down to like several hundred thousand people to to look at here. And when I did that, um, my messaging became more clear, and people respond better than than I expected, right? Um, does any have you guys heard of the word hot list before? Like, do you guys know what that means? Like, make a hot list? No, right? No, I don't think people talk about it anymore. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not like so, a term people use. Okay. So most of us have heard all this world-class copywriter, Dan Kent. It was a Dan Kennedy, the, the OG. It's Dan Kennedy, right? Uh, Dan Kennedy is a very skilled copywriter. He's done a ton a copywriter. of yeah, yeah, I mean, OG, you're talking Gary Benzavenga, Gary Halbert, uh, John Carlton. Yeah, Gary Halbert. Schwartz, those names. Um, yeah. yeah, so Gary uh, Halbert talks about the hot list. And we all hear this like world-class copywriter always nail it. Every time they write a book, every time they launch a copy, every time they, they write a letter, it just convert, right? And we're, we're here wondering like, what the heck, how... How can they write and convert every single time, right? It's and then that kind of link, and then I started questioning myself, like, how does a music artist hit like the Billboard every time they launch? You know what I mean? It's like it, there must be a formula here, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then you know, hearing Sam teaching it again, and he made me go through the exercise. I went to like a, I spent like a week of just researching, understanding what the hot list mean. And, and, then, and then it's funny because after I understood it, completely shifted the way how I see the marketplace, uh, how I see the, 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 the agency business model, how I see my customers. And it's to, to narrow that down, right? To make it simple to understand. A, a hot list is like a list of people that want to listen to you. Um, uh, like I think Russell Brunson put it in, in, in a way he called it the, uh, the hot dog cart it, right outside mm. the football game when it ends, mm -hmm. right? Like you mm -hmm. don't need to have a great offer. You just got to have a great position with a great like market that need, that need your services. Yeah. So before building out a services or pitch deck or offer, you have to understand what the market need in the first place. You have to research. And then you have to validate it by speaking to the to the your audience, to, to the people who you want to sell to, right? Yep. So so um, so that's what I did. I I just narrow down the people that I really want to sell to, and then I figure out what they really really need, ah. and, just, and by by asking them like you know pain point questions and really deep, really deep pain point question not really surface stuff and they gave me a list of like um of like uh, uh uh you know how they feel and i just put the list together yeah, I sure I and i craft the offer so oh. that's what i did 
uh, when I when I was going through the MVP program, and I launched the offer. It's been three weeks now, so I had two weeks, two and a half weeks full of data, right? So like since I launched the offer, we've been booking a hundred demos per week. That's twenty demos per day, consistently for two weeks now. And and that just kind of like surprised me because I never booked this many demo before in my agency, you know, experience in four years now. Um, and if any of you guys have run agency ad or have ran like lead gen for your leads, a lead cost is what? 20 bucks, right? We can all agree on that. And then, and then what? Most of the lead goes to you. Let's just say out of 10 leads, only five really, you know, respond, right? And out of the five, two books a demo. And out of the two, one shows up. Right? This, is, this sounds familiar to you guys. That sounds pretty, pretty accurate, right? So you got 10 leads. You spent 200 bucks for one book demo, correct? Like that's pretty industry standard to get a qualified lead on the phone to pitch. It's going to cost you 200 bucks. And, and I always thought that was the norm. I, I thought, you know, hey, look, everybody says that's the norm. I guess that's the norm, right? But after I really dive deep and really build my hot list, I'm, I'm only speaking to the people who, who wants to buy my products and have a problem that, that I can solve for them, right? And it's a very small group. When I launched the offer to this small group, my cost per booked demo is 20 bucks. Not cost per lead. Cost per booked demo, 20 bucks. So I just cut my cost 90% of, the, of what I, you know, I guess all the you guys been paying, all the agency people have been paying, uh, you know, by tenfold, right? One tenth of whatever it's cost. So it's 20 bucks per book demo. Now, every three demos, I spent 60 bucks, one person buy. So my cost of acquisitions have dropped from $600 to $60 because you take three demos for you to call somebody, right? So cost of, you know, the CAC is like six, five, 600 bucks to, to be really realistic here with the agency model to acquire a SaaS client to pay you 500 bucks a month. Um, so because, and the only thing I did differently this time around with my agency was really super focused and narrowed down and, and really build a hot list and really understand what the hot list really mean. You know, how to launch offer and have a, a very high res, response rate, right? It's like, people say co email doesn't work. Well, because you co email everybody, you know? How about you co email to the people that really fit your, your target demographic? You would have a different audience, you know? Um, uh, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, okay? So we always wonder, like, how does Taylor Swift kill it every, every single, every album? Because, and, and the, the thing is, if you guys ever watch a Taylor Swift uh, concert, everybody knows the lyrics. It tells a story that people resonate to, right? That's why people listen to you, because your offer, your messaging, connect with them. Right. So that's what I mean by the hot list. And like to me, the first time of understanding the hot list, it like completely shifted the whole the whole thing, how I see everything now. Daniel, you you, you won a Sasspreneur last a Sasspreneur Award last year. Right? I did, yeah. For, yeah, yeah, I did. For your agency. And in talking, you did it the hard way, didn't you? I did. I it I co it cost me a lot of money to earn that award. Um, as you know, like this whole agency game, you have to invest money into it. If you not ready to invest 10 plus thousand a month into this, to make this work, you, you won't have the result that everybody else is, you know, showing off about, right? It's very difficult when everybody is selling practically the same thing. <laughs> everybody sounds the same, you know? Um, so how do you differentiate yourself and also have to add spend budget to 
to, you know, like at least a hundred bucks a day of ads, right? To really have traction, to really have leads, to really refine your offer. So like I, ha- I was selling to everybody and then I narrowed down to my niche. And then even with that, it's still pretty surface level, extremely surface level. And I didn't really understand why my lead is 20 bucks or why my cost per book cost is 100 bucks, you know. Um, but understanding and really narrow down a small group, like super targeted group that you can speak to and they respond to you changes the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How many of you guys, by show of hands, either like this or digitally, have ever struggled to create an offer? A lot of hands going up. How many of you have had an offer that you would say falls underneath the the irresistible category? Not as many hands. Daniel, you you should raise your hand because your offer is biting like crazy. So you should raise your hand, buddy. It's okay. The question is, is how do we create an irresistible offer? Like, how do we do that? Do we create one? Is that the right word? Or do we discover it? See, most of the problems in life are because we focus on symptoms and we don't focus on sources, right? And when we put together MVP, as I was talking to each of the people that were exiting and I was discussing their overwhelm, I went back to my team and I said, this is what everybody's saying. Clearly, they don't know how we started. See, when I started, we didn't have fancy stuff like high level. We would literally get leads and we'd send them to a Google sheet. That was it. And so we were constrained to be simple. Everything we did had to be simple, not because it was some great strategy, but because there was nothing else. And then over time, we could use Zapier and plug this thing in and plug that thing in, plug that thing. And we had this like Frankenstein thing. And we started to churn customers. We didn't know why. Why are we churning customers? We're doing the same thing. We're we're still doing a good job. Before UPEX was UPEX, I used UPEX in my own agency. My agency was called Patient Stream. And when we launched this capability to to, uh, my clients were doctors, when we launched this to them, I signed up 52 doctors on one webinar. The next one, I signed up 30 something. And I was getting people like this. And it was easy. Something was very interesting about that version of UPEX. We could only load in 12 templates. We couldn't do any more. We didn't have the capacity to do any more. So once again, we were naturally constrained. It wasn't some great strategy. We were just constrained by the, by the software, by the technology. But people came in like that. And all of a sudden we said, well, this is the model that people want. And so we started building the platform, going, going. And we said, we want to be able to have as many templates as we want. And our, where our platform built that capability, we went from 12 templates to 150. And all of a sudden, do, 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 churn started to, actually, I shouldn't say do, do, do down. That would be good. Churn started going up. We started losing customers at a rate that we didn't understand because nothing had changed other than complexity. So this brings me back to you guys. How many of you guys have heard the phrase hindsight is 2020? Of course, right? Give me one in the chat if you've heard hindsight is 2020. Yeah. You want to know what else is 2020? Mentorship. Mentorship is 2020. Why? Because the person mentoring you has hindsight. Wouldn't it be good if that person said, hey, do you want to build an agency that is simple to operate, has high profit margins, and that is fun to own? Wouldn't it be great if the person had actually done that? I think that would be a benefit, right? I've done both. I've had the agency that was constrained to simplicity, and I've had the agency that was 
you know, declined into confusion. All right. So by show of ones, so you can do hands if you can see me, or you can give me a one by show of ones or hands. How many of you are within the first six months of your agency journey? All right. How many of you are six months to 12 months? Give me a two. Okay. All right. A <laughs> two. I like it. You give me an actual two, Mike. I like it. How many of you are one year beyond and you're still going in the circle of confusion? Give me a three. Wow, more threes than I thought. So the question is, why? Man, more threes than I thought. Jeez. Why? I would I would like to open that up to you guys. Why do you think, and I'll ask for you guys for engagement, and you can unmute and tell me why you think that is, or you can type it in, whatever you want. Why do you think it's been, and especially for you threes, why has it been over a year and we're still stuck in confusion? Will, did you want to say something? Yeah, actually I do. Um, I got in this through Frank Kern and Bay, uh, Rob and all you guys, you know, following the train. Yep. And, and what I've got to say is everybody's got a little bit of different um, perspective on what it takes to be successful. Yep. Um, <clears throat> my background, I owned a technology company. I sold it, it's worth a half a billion dollars today, but I started that back in the eighties. So that was a much different model than this is a model. I think the challenge here is the secret sauce, the overwhelm, the what is it to simplify the model, go high level, keeps adding bells and whistles and everybody's got an opinion. And if you follow all the opinions and you jump into all the school groups, you get nothing done. Yep. And I jumped on this. I happened to be eating lunch and I saw your email come by and I said, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. You've been around for a while. I haven't jumped into um, your platform yet. But what I will say is when you said simple, fun, let's make some money. That's what this is supposed to be about. But I would venture to say and Frank said it in one of his programs yesterday, that probably less than 10% of the people do anything with what they purchase. Mm. So I'm sitting here and I've got a couple of clients, but it's a hell of a lot of work and I'm not having any fun. <laughs> you know, it's like a bad day on the golf course and I play a lot of golf. Yes. Does that make sense? It makes a ton of sense. I have been there, done that. Tammy, are you... Uh able to uh i don't know if you're i see you here are you able to unmute while she's there she is Hi. Hi, uh that's a big problem people get into this and there's so many entry points where do i start where do i finish and i'd go back to the slide where i saw all of those that feedback coming back from people but the reason I asked Tammy to, um, and actually, I don't know if you were here, Tammy, when we opened up, but I had your screenshot of your comment you made in the UPEX community. And it spoke a lot to, because you've been in the agency space for several years. So what would you say? I don't know if, did you hear what Will was saying? I kind of put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, I didn't quite catch what he was saying. He's saying there's a lot of people saying, their way of doing things and it just seems like hey this is supposed to be fun this is i was this was touted as simple but all i am getting is overwhelm and confusion is that a good summation will of what you said yeah ab absolutely i the the i'm spending more time consuming than i am getting out and generating business and then the clients that i am getting aren't necessarily the clients i want yeah. Um, and I look at those are the kind of people that you're cutting your teeth on. And then a new feature gets introduced or a new way to do business gets introduced. And, you know, I look at this and I've been into it for about a year and a half now. And it's and, and I am to the point. Nothing changes unless something changes. And I'm to the point of saying it's time for change. Yes, it's either a new platform. It's a new game. It's a different, it's do something different. There's money to be made. 
but you know, I, I forget what I think Daniel said. Everybody's basically doing the same thing with the same platform with the same tools, and there's only a very small group of people that are making money. And it seems to me it's the marketers selling to the marketers. It's not the people that are selling to the you know the B two Bs or the consumers or small businesses. Uh, because the small businesses right now are overwhelmed trying to make money too. So that's kind of the idea. <laughs> yeah. Tammy, your response, because you played in that arena before you came in. And, and Tammy's an MVP member, by the way. Right. Um, so she she bought into the program during our first cohort. So Tammy, what would you respond with to, to what? Uh, I completely agree and understand where you're coming from will because i have been that um you know it, it's like that's you know they all talk about it the shiny object syndrome i have had this conversation a number of times about people or sorry not people but the the industry i, I guess we could call it as an industry regardless of like who is who's marketing to us but it being its own economy people just you know, going from group to group and offer to offer, you read something new, you're like, oh, that's the winner. That's the winner. This is the winner. And you keep being led around by the nose by the people who are making money from all of these things. And they're just selling to each other. I feel like the groups are selling to each other. The It's like an independent economy of its own. So I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, Having said that, I have been a victim of that myself. I can't, I'm embarrassed to say how much money I've spent on courses and, <laughs> and products and the next shiny object. I won't even tell you how much. I, I, I wouldn't even want my husband to know how much I've spent. <laughs> <laughs> and if well, I say I got, that I've, I've here, got about a quarter of a million dollars in this whole thing over the last five years. Yeah, well, if I, if I put it out, it's recorded, and then I can, I can't deny it. So, All right. um, but uh, having said that, I did have a relatively so, so, um, successful agency. Still do the the challenge that I have and have had is um, one that always trying to incorporate what could, what else can I do for my clients, but but. I, I had a fa I have a Facebook ads agency and my clients are all over the place. They are um, coaches, they are e-commerce, they are um, local businesses. They are, they're all, there's no, every day I have to put my brain on a, in a different mode with every single client to make sure that I'm, you know, looking at their stats, making sure they're profitable, thinking about their money like it's my money. And what I liked about the MVP is that the the teaching and and Daniel touched on this about coming down to one micro niche. You can expand later over time, but just simplifying things because I didn't have any time for myself, working every night, every weekend, um, and so and that being because there was no there's no um, there's no streamline. There's no you know, there's no um, clarity, clarity, and there's no replication. I couldn't re replicate things from one client to another. I always had to be coming up with new ideas and new, new um, ways to promote their offer. So that is one of the things that really helped me in MVP was getting that clarity. It's not just about, I mean, I think that the idea is that, um, th that we're, um, as Sam and the team are, um, promoting UpX. And that's not actually a fact. The fact is they help you create an offer that is replicatable. Of course, uh, you know, you want UpX to be part of that, but um, but it, it's it's a little bit touched on and, and they take you right from the beginning, beginning of doing the research, coming up with a, an offer that meets the research you've done, not, I think, Sam, you mentioned this so many times, um, not coming up with an offer uh, or, or a product that <laughs> you're trying to sell, but coming up with a solution to a problem. And so then, you know, from there, it, they cover even onboarding clients and how to get things so that your life's easy, the client's life's easy. You can easily identify if one of your clients has an issue because it stands out like a sore thumb because everything, all the, the KPIs are in line. So 
um, it's really, really helped me narrow that focus in and, and be able to come up with a product and a solution that really meets a market need and not the other way around. Yeah. Thank you. You guys, you want to know one really simple principle that every direct response marketer before the internet did to make millions and millions and millions of dollars, create something once and sell it a thousand times or more. Nobody does that anymore. And nobody's talking about that anymore. And the art of doing that, being able to execute on that one idea has been lost because of technology, right? In my own partnership, when we were building an agency, there was two of us. I was the guy obsessed with copywriting, offer creation and persuasion. And then I had my back end nerd and he put everything together. Right. And you need that. I mean, personally, I needed that. Right. And it was me deep diving all of those things. I got obsessed with the great copywriters like Gary Benzabang. I mean, this, this right here, if you guys have been on any of my trainings, this is like my prized possession, right? It's his final going away um, seminar. And a lot of the things that I learned from that are in MVP. Create it once, sell a thousand times. All of the, the, the intuition you have about building a business is add more features, get as many clients as you can get, do what the clients ask you to do, do all of these things, which leads to disaster. So the big question is, is how do you do it? What is the method? What is the process? What is the formula? And indeed, there is both a formula, but there are also principles. There are laws that you have to know. How many of you, is it fun? Have you ever played a game with a friend and they know all the rules and they're like, hey, let's play this game. Let's all play Monopoly. And they're all playing. They know the rules. You don't know the rules. How fun is that game to play? Not very. All of you are playing a game right now without knowing the rules. And you're jumping from one board game to the next and they're different games. All right. It's like you got a puzzle and it's flipped over. You don't know what the, the, the pieces are blank. Flip it over. See what they are. Put them together. All right. And I know that's an easy thing to say. These are great metaphors, Sam. Kudos to you for using such, you know, great persuasive language. I'm telling you right now, you start at the beginning and you go to the end. All right. That is offer creation. That is product creation. That is the entire thing, but it's something that is very lost. Right. And when we go out to all of the tactics, when the conversations are about tactics, those work for a week and then they're done. So if you know the rules of the game, you create your own tactics, right? Now we teach you tactics in MVP, but we never teach you a tactic unless there is a, a principle that underlines what we just taught you. We're going to teach you how to do email marketing. Boom. You're going to under, you're going to understand how to do it. Makes sense. Give me one. If that sounds exciting, just because you'll finally have some type of solution, some type of understanding of what you're doing. Okay. There we go. There we go. Give me a two. I better not see any two. Give me a two. If you don't want to gain any new skills. Thank goodness. I was going to kick you out. All right. You're going to have to gain new skills. All right. You're going to have to learn some stuff, but you're going to learn the right stuff. You're going to take out the guesswork and you're going to follow in the right order. All right. Now, back in March, I opened up this program called MVP. You've heard it referred to Daniel's an MVP. Tammy's an MVP. And I've been talking about an email. I've been opening it and closing. I've been sharing videos of people that have had great outcomes with it so far. It's been in beta. It is back open out of beta. And I want to tell you what it is, what it includes. And if you want to be a part of it, I want to give you the opportunity to be a part of it. But I saw a couple jackasses saying, is this a pitch for MVP? You can leave. I'm not kidding. Get out. I'm serious. You'll notice that other than Randy, Randy, kudos to you. How old are you, Randy? 20. Kudos to you, Randy. You'll notice that other than Randy, we got a bunch of old people here. That's because I'm an old guy and I don't have time to play around. MVP is a course that I created. 
Well, I'm not pointing you out. There are a lot of other old people. No, I mean, look at Stuart. Jeez, come on. Just kidding, Stuart. Um, I didn't create this program so I could make a bunch of money. I created this, this program because there's a big problem and I know how to solve it. Not only do I know the tactical approach to solving it, but I know the business principles to solve it because I have learned them myself by a mentor. And if you want to be a part of that, give me a one in the chat. Give me a one like this. I don't care. Give me some kind of one. If you want to hear how it works, then I'd be happy to share it with you. If you do that, that crap like you guys are talking about, seriously, leave. I don't need your money. Guys, tell me this is just a pitch for MVP. Come on, get out of here. All right. Shake it off, right, Daniel? Like Taylor Swift says, shake it off. All right. Uh, so here's the gig. MVP is an on-demand program. It is still in beta. What does that mean? That means that during beta, everybody who commits to beta that purchases it, it's 2000 bucks. You have access to me via Marco Polo. Tammy, can you send me a Marco Polo real quick? Or Daniel, one of you guys. Uh, so people will actually know what that is. I've found that people actually don't know what this is. Um, you have access to me because I want to make sure that as people go through, they're getting the outcomes. And if they're not getting the outcomes that we're fixing what, what's happening. And so far there's Tammy. Hey, Sam. Just me. <laughs> awesome. So you get direct access to me like that because I want to, one, if we're going to be building a program that gets the outcome you want, which is a simple, easy to operate, high profit margin agency, that's the one you guys all showed up for. If you want to do that, I've built it, but I want to make sure that it's the best product in the entire marketplace, right? I don't want there to be any second guess huh? of oh well you should do this program you should do that program. Right. no so this is the one to do i'm putting i'm staking my brand my my professional credibility on this one program if it sucks i will suck and i'm too old to suck so you know unlike other people who are young and will just go tear down their you know it kind of means something when people talk about your name i'll tell you that randy that means something Hold on to that. It does. Because, yeah. Because when people like go out and do all sorts of bullshit online and they just do it for money, they don't think about the future. It will bite you in the ass. Your word, who you are is the only thing you got. So this program is designed to take you from agency confusion. Hey, I don't know how to get started. I don't know where to get started. I don't know what to offer to the end result is I have an agency that's so specific and so dialed in that it's become from specific to simple. It's simple because I'm not solving 20,000 different people's problems. It's simple. What does simple mean? It's got the least like moving parts possible. And by the way, we give you a checklist in the, in uh, agency MVP. We give you a snapshot of the things that are turned on and of the things that are turned off. Because high level with all of their things that we said it's confusing, whatever. Okay, we'll just turn it off. It's that simple. That's the solution. Turn it off. Don't pay attention to it. Stay focused. Don't be distracted. How do you do that? You go through a program that was curated from step one to outcome. Make sense? So you get the program. It's on demand. You get access to me during beta. All right? And um, I think that's about it. Do you take cash? <laughs> Mail it in an envelope, whatever. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and put, if you want to, I, I, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. My agency, agency, mvp.com. All right. If you want to get started, it's $2,000. You go to myagencymvp.com, and as soon as you do that, you're going to send me an email. Actually, you got to do this because last time somebody didn't do it and it took us like a day or two to get them access. Send me an email with a screenshot that you paid the 2000 bucks, and I'll get you in right away to both MVP as well as um, uh, Marco Polo. All right? So uh, 
Are there any questions? You'll notice that in terms of a webinar, when people roll out a webinar, they have it much more refined and it goes through this and then it goes through that and then it does a bundle. I'm giving you the outcome you want for the price that is the cheapest you're ever going to get it. Will, what's your question? Yeah. So the question I have is, does this just drop into our current uh, GHL agency account? Uh, or is this a brand new one? I mean, Frank's got Frank's got a Rainmaker. I've got GHL agency. Is this another GHL agency? I guess, what's your goal? Is your goal to build an agency that like has a bunch of customers and is fun or you want to build Frank's Rainmaker? No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, does this drop into my existing agency? Yeah, uh, it, I mean, or does it operate as a separate platform? No, it, it's it's using high. The snapshot we give you is a high level snapshot. That's a, that's what I wanted to know. Oh, sorry. Well, the reason I say that is we had a guy named uh, Gary, and he's like, dude, you should see my high level account. It is a rat's nest of snapshots. And I said, you have to tear it down, dude. Right. Like those are, that's all bullshit. That's all distracting you. Agree. If you, believe, if you believe in what we're doing, do this one. Keep it simple. Okay, okay. got it. Thanks, Will. Yep. Good question. Robert. Hey guys, hey Sam. Thank you very hey. much for uh, putting this together. It means a lot. Um, Randy and I are actually business partners. Uh, so he's he's the uh, the tech nerd and, uh, and I'm on the front end with the sales. Uh, awesome. So, um, my question is, you know, we just kind of more or less been in this about six months to a year. Um, we're in physical therapy uh, kind of space. My direct question, though, would be we're wondering, you know, putting together offers on a B2B to get client side uh, is a big struggle, obviously. That's what we're talking about here a lot. But I'm wondering what you might have to say about how this can help us improve making ads for our clients as well through UPEX and what else, you know, other areas. So, cause you know, you create these ads, what's called improving or professional ads. Yeah. However, you know, for someone like us who hasn't gone through this with customers getting lots of results, they're technically fronting the proving grounds, you know, and we're not spending that money running ads for physical therapists to ourselves. So yeah. I'm just wondering if you kind of go through that or if they kind of just backwards help each other, you know, to, you know, forwards and backwards, you know, if you can run, in other words, if you can run for yourself, it helps you improve for your client side. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. makes sense. Um, we cover that in MVP at length. In fact, okay. um, I knew that one of the, so there's one word. Okay. What's the difference between a professional marketer and an amateur marketer? It's one word. If anybody knows, I'm going to give you 50 gold stars. Experience. Okay. Well, experience. It's actually a more tactical money. <laughs> oh, Paul Lee said it. Paul, have you been on my meetings before? Research. Okay. All of this complexity and confusion you have is because you don't know the research method. As soon as you learn how to do that, that methodology the right way and the and the laws and the principles that govern that research, as soon as you do that, you won't be asking me those questions. In fact, we had a guy, uh, Lewis Waddell. I don't know if you're, he's from the UK. I doubt he's here. Uh, Lewis, if you're here, you can unmute. Um, but he's an architect. He's a big overthinker. He's from the UK. And he had very similar questions. And he posted in our school community, one of my favorite quotes I or like a, a line that I just love. He goes, I can see these ads writing themselves. And guess what? That was in week three. We don't cover offer creation until I think, I think, uh, is it week eight? I think it's week eight when I actually go into the nitty gritty of offer creation, but everybody by that time, they're not worried about how to do offer creation because conceptually they know Gary Benzavanga said, I tell marketers again and again, a gifted offer beats a gifted pen. Everybody thinks it's all about wordplay. You got to write fancy words. That's what this whole game is about. No, 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 no. It's all about understanding the customer and then the offer will appear. That's why you don't create offers. That's why you discover offers. So all that stuff you're talking about, yeah, it's hard to get customers. B2B ads are hard. And you end up, when you go into like 
swipe files and you see competition, they're all promising big things. Like I'll get you 30 new patients this month or it's free. Like they're all doing like this race to the bottom, the guarantee race to the bottom. Number one, like you gotta be careful because FTC wise, some of that stuff is illegal. Number two, you don't have to do that at all. I would never do that. I never did that one time ever. And when I want to cut customers for my agency, I clicked a button and they came. That's what we're building for you, or that's what you're going to learn and discover. Oh, assuming you're not scared of getting some skills, right? Who wants to be smarter? Give me a one. If you want to be smarter, you want to be smarter. You know, I know people are scared. Kyle, you the man, nice beard, by the way, solid. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, Gary Rieger. Can you come in real quick? Gary's, I don't know if you're able to unmute Gary, um, but he's also a MVP fella. Oh, he's I'm driving. here. Yeah. I'm a little mobile right now, but I uh, had to show up, man. Second experience, like your experience, Gary's actually, Gary was in the program for two weeks and I think a light bulb clicked for him. Right. And Gary, you mind just taking 30 seconds real quick? I know you're, let's stay safe, but you mind? Yeah, yeah, no problem. And I'm good. I'm good. Like uh, what, what happened in the second, I believe it was the second week. It was one thing that you covered in, in a way that I've heard it before. I've seen it before. Lots of people have said it, but it wasn't really articulated the way that I needed it to be for it to like make sense and land. And when I heard you uh, train on this one topic, I was like, man, whatever my resistance is or was, I'm just gonna tuck that aside. I'm gonna go all in and I'm gonna put everything behind this. Implemented this one strategy and I generated like in, within like a week, around 15 K in new business. And it was one minor shift in my bigger core philosophy. And that was what was so amazing. And I was like, dang, if I get this on my second week, I'm really excited for what the rest of the course has. And that's really like, I think the main takeaway for anyone watching this, that's maybe on the fence. I don't know. Uh, you know, how long each one of you have been in the industry. I've been in the agency space for a long time, like four or five years, had some great successes, had some wins, but kept kind of finding myself struggling around areas that were like around, you know, uh, I call it the fulfillment to uh, sales paradox, right? So I couldn't scale past a certain point because I'd have to shift out of one mode to another and whenever you lose momentum, it's like, it's hard to regain. And this course has given me the foundation and the understanding of what I was doing wrong. Not that it was wrong, but it's just like, I don't, I, I don't like taking two steps forward and two te steps back. So this is like a foundational course where a lot of our other courses out there, they're great courses out there. Don't get me wrong, but they're dealing more with like skills like they're, they're adding more tools to your tool chest, so to speak, where this one is teaching you how to sharpen the most important tool so that you can be most effective with it. And uh, man, just big thanks to you and the whole team with uh, uh, Jacob and, and Heather. You guys have been exceptional. And uh, I'm just excited because, man, it's been, what, two months, I think now, and nine weeks we've been in it. We're kind of coming towards the end. And everything's starting to really take shape in a way that's like, I, I just never thought I would be at this point um, in eight weeks. Like I thought I was going to have to like really grind and grind and hustle and hustle. And a lot of the big question marks that I had, like nobody can answer. And, and, and you guys just, man, just over delivered on this. So, so tremendous uh, uh, standing ovation from me and my wife and my whole team over here. Awesome. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Any, any other questions? Logan, what's up, buddy? Yep. Yeah, uh, thanks for putting this together here, Sam. Um, so, so we're doing, uh, uh, we have well over a hundred clients and, um, done for you, uh, uh, Facebook ads, and then we have high level 
and um, uh, what we've found or what I'm experiencing currently is as we, we grow or every time we we have grown, the team has to grow along with it and yep. expenses are it's yep. are stupid. And so, um, you know, your emails were pretty much geared towards towards me on the on the research side there. Um, I don't know what my question is. I guess I just want to make sure. How do you not do that? I hate taking courses. I hate going like we've, we've pretty much everyone on this call has been through this process. And I I hate doing it. I don't blame you. Yeah. But if, if, if it can solve that problem, um, I guess, I guess one of my questions is, for somebody like me, is it is it a rebuild? Like, okay, you gotta you gotta scrap and and restart. Is it with with using your method? Some of the things that you have going right now have we we cover this thing called entropy, and so you, you've allowed entropy to to creep in, right? And so anytime you grow, so you're at hundred, which is commendable, but having a hundred where you're like at 25 percent profit margins is not fun and you're on the nice edge of whether or not you got a business from month to month uh by the way you guys if you want to reach out to any mvp members right you can you can message them directly i'm not i don't care like i'm not like hiding anybody like you want to ask them what their actual opinion are you think they're course no go ask them so tammy gave you her uh direct uh contact there um so logan yeah it's not going to be a complete teardown, but you are going to have to like filter. You are going to have to make some choices. If I would assume you're going to follow our model, right? Because it's, I can't, I could teach you the seven figure model where they have big robust teams and all that kind of crap. Cause I did it, but it sucked. So I'm not going to teach that model. I don't want to do that. It's not fun. It's not fun for me. Right. Um, Daniel did that model too. Right. So I would prefer to add clients, the right clients. See, a lot of the, a lot of problem also comes down to customer selection, right? A lot of these problems you can solve with customer selection. And I can say these one-off things like it's customer selection. The question is, how do you do it? Like, how do you do that? How do you attract them? How do you do all of the things that you need to build that business? So, uh, Logan, you're going to have to, and I know you're not, um, scared of doing it, but you're going to have to learn some new skills. You're going to have to make some choices, right? And clearly there's things you're going to have to change because your agency isn't doing what you want it to do. You you guys got acquisition down, right? That probably means that you have somebody that's, that is a very charismatic salesperson. That's probably what that means. Is that you? Well, I mean, sure. I'll take the, I'll, I'll take that. We, we have good partnerships in the industry. That's what we have. Okay, and so you got so, good distribution. So they're, they're feeding, yeah. they're feeding customers to us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the better outcomes you get for those distribution channels, the more they're going to refer you. If you make them look bad, they're not going to refer you. Yeah, been yeah. been both been on both sides of that coin. Yeah, well, and it's like, and you know how this is. It's kind of you know, uh, not all of it's. I mean, it's on us, but not all of it's on us. And so, um, so, you know, that's, that's 50, 50, as far as what you just said, as far as, you know, uh, um, uh, to the partner, partner companies. So, um, cool. Well, I'm in, I mean, new skills, 2k, good man. Uh, sounds like a good investment. So I'm already in, I'm about to email you. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Appreciate you, Logan. Excited to have you, Robert, you have another question? Sorry. As long as no one else has any other questions, I don't want to monopolize time. But um, I, I was wondering, you know, just Randy and I, um, sales, tech, customer service and fulfillment from both of us. Um, love Upex and everything that you guys do. Appreciate it. Could you give me and Randy, maybe if it's even possible, like, I love this whole idea of a lifestyle agency. I love the content that you've been putting out about that. I love the idea of not having a million people working for us because I see where that goes. And I've, I've had some witness of that in other types of businesses that I've been in in my life. Um, can two people 
hit like what what could two people do like is is that a bad question i don't know is that an unfair no, that's question? a good question i had 127 clients with three people wow and what kind of profit margins do you think are like achievable that's a great question uh I mean, if you can do 65, 70% profit margins, then you're doing good. Yeah, that would, that would be, it's an endeavor, right? So it's like, okay, are we building something we want is my question. And, and that sounds like something we would want. You, know? so you guys have heard addition by subtraction, right? Yeah. That's a hard thing to, to it's an easy thing to say, a hard thing to put in practice. Right. Right. You yeah. have to know, once again, what are the principles that are governing those decisions? Mm -hmm. Right. And whenever what, what, what happens to most people over time is they get their business, they get their agency. Right. And Logan probably did this. <laughs> you get your customers, you start getting them. And then those customers are like, Hey, or you, you think, Hey, we can make more before you start doing websites. Hey, they're complaining about this thing. Well, let's do that. Well, this is, so you start like building all of these things mm -hmm. and then time goes by yeah. enough time to where you look back at where you're at today to when you started and you're like the product is no is no longer a product right you have you have you cannot productize an outcome with complexity right right and so then people use the word well we systemize it or systematize i don't know which is the right word by the way systemize systematize whatever <laughs> That's a person that has a very complex business. It's like, oh, well, I saw this thing happening. So I made this protocol. Dude, you do not want that kind of business. Over time, it will eat you up. It will eat your profit margins and you won't even know it. You won't even be able to, to diagnose. How did this happen? Right. The only reason I was able to figure out a lot of this stuff is because good mentorship, good like just good partnership and uh, I can take a swift kick to the digital nuts and keep going. Right. So mm -hmm. that's where I, I don't quit. All right. But I'm also not stupid. A lot of people persist in their stupidity. I refuse to persist. I will look at a problem and be like, uh, this ain't right. Something's wrong here. We got to fix something that happened upstream that way. Okay, we're getting a little long on time. I want to tell one quick story to you guys. And then um, if, yeah, Logan, you're in, buddy. Awesome. Um, that is agency MVP. If you want to get signed up, it's 2000 bucks. Get in. Uh, the first 10 people that get in today will get access to me via Marco Polo. This is beta. We're, we're changing stuff up. So access to me. Will is in. Awesome. Excited to have you, buddy. Um, in the game of marketing and doing lead generation. Okay. This is when I said customer selection to Logan, when I said that that is one of the biggest things that you can do to win. Right. I had a, uh, a, um, customer named Ray PV. He's in the course a couple of times, right? Cause I, this is a very important case study, but Ray PV came to me in the very beginning of the pandemic and said, my practice is about to go under. I need a hail Mary. Well, marketers never throw a Hail Mary, guys. I don't throw Hail Marys. We don't, that's not our business. Okay. And I said, no. I said, no, we don't do that. He goes, can I just sign up, please? I won't be a pain in the butt. I'll sign up. I'm like, I, I told you I wouldn't take you, but you're persisting. Fine, sign up. He signed up. Months go by. All of a sudden, one day, I start getting all of these new customer signups happening like crazy. I'm like, dude, what's going on? That guy had gone in, crushed it doubled his practice, got $50,000 of new cash coming in the door every single month, saved his business because of my agency and our simple approach to advertising. So I got him on an interview. I really wanted to find out his, his story. I wanted, I wanted to exploit his results. Right? I wanted to find out what was going on. And he talked about something that many of you have gone through. He said the first six weeks were terrible. We were getting leads in. Um, it was like, but nobody was showing up. Nobody was like, you know, nobody was coming. We weren't make, making any money. And then one day, now, mind you, this is in the middle of the pandemic. This guy has no options. This is a true Hail Mary. 
So he's motivated to do everything in his power to make this work. One day his staff is on the front is on the phone with the Facebook lead. And he said, is that a Facebook lead? And the, um, the gal said, yeah, he goes, transfer that to me right now. He gets on the phone instead of booking the appointment, does a quick over the phone consultation completely shifts the direction of what that a lead flow would normally happen. Now we're talking to the patient. The patient shows up the next day, converts to a $4,500 care plan the following day. So in month or in week one to six, no money, losing money. And in 48 hours started making a lot of money. And over the next two months, doubled his practice doing that one thing. I never changed the ads. The ads for the sucky person or the ads for the awesome person. All right. That person was just desperate enough to take action and do the right thing at the right time. And that's what made all the outcomes. Now, some of your clients come embedded already with that ability to do that. And they will come in, they will kick, like they'll, they'll crush it. The other ones are a process for you to be aware of and leery of, right? But your whole premise, your whole business model will live and die on your ability to find something that works and then sell it a thousand times. All right. So hope you guys uh, join MVP. It looks like we've got several people who have, I'm super excited to have you. Uh, I will be looking at my email as soon as I actually have a call right after this with somebody. Uh, but as soon as I get done with that, I will send you guys access. Any other questions, quick questions before we bounce out of here. Yes, Sam. I, Sam, I wanted to ask, does, um, does Upex come with it or how does Upex play into this? Do we have to buy the Upex software? is not included in this offer. This offer is the program of all okay. that kind of stuff. Um, at some point in the future, it will, but the price is also going to go up in the future. Got it. Okay. Thank Quick you, Olivia. Question. I'm definitely interested, definitely interested, but okay. I haven't launched my, I'm just about to launch my agency. So I'm like, you know, I got to be mindful of expenses and all that. Cause I've spent a lot of money. Like a lot of people here <laughs> have said, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it, it comes down to like, it comes down to really three questions right? One, do you feel like we understand the problem? Two, do you feel like we can help? And three, do you want us to help? Those are the only three questions you have to answer. That's a three-step close, by the way, you guys, you can use it. I don't care, whatever. Uh, but for real, like if we understand the problem, if we create a solution, then the one thing you're going to waste is time. And if you want, and by the way, if you want, if you get it and it's not what I just said, I'll give you your money back. I don't have Sam. to say that. I don't have to like do all this crazy guarantee bullshit. It's like, I'll just give you your money back. You don't want it. I don't, I don't want your money. I don't need that money. Question. But I want you to take action, Olivia, because there's, uh, I think Will said a really, I'll, 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 whoever said that, I'll get you to just say, Will said something really smart. For things to change, something has got to change. Imperfect action is what I was told. Just do it. There you go. <laughs> Just do it. I promise you <laughs> money comes and goes. That money will come back and you will be happy that you did it. Eric says, just do it. All right, Will, you were raising your hand. I'm not, and, and there was somebody yeah. else that said something. Go ahead. Yeah, Will. one, uh, just following up on Olivia's question about UPEX. Do we need that now or do we wait and just go through the program? What's the game plan on that? You want to know something funny? We don't touch Upex or high level until week four. Right. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it's like, dude, if how are you going to build something if you don't know what or who you're building it for? All of these people are like, Get in there and do it. it's like, do you know how to run a business? Are you an entrepreneur? I got no. it. I, I think, I think, I think, uh, I think high level is week four. Is that right, Tammy? High level is week four. Upex is week five. And then in week six, it's it's uh, 
uh, it's it's high level sub account, something like that. I should All know, right. but you know, it's it's along those along those veins. Sam, I have a question. Yes, what? go ahead. I have uh, go high level about four months Upex as well. Haven't even used Upex to be honest because I got uh, trapped in all the uh, courses. Yep. Agency and, overwhelm. Everybody does it. Yep. But I've but I've dug into it hard enough that I realize a potential uh, downfall, and that is trying to uh, build sub accounts and give the give those sub accounts out at whatever cost in addition to doing advertising and so forth. But I, I I know that I'll be eaten up by the technical support behind that if I take that direction. What I feel like is the proper approach is to do affiliate uh, programs with those people, let them use go high levels tech support to, uh, to, to, to help them when their email's not working, when, you know, any, anything about it from a go high level standpoint where I can focus on the advertising does that sound legitimate? No. Okay. What am I missing? A lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm being serious. A lot. Let me just walk. Number one, mm -hmm. who builds businesses for other people? Wouldn't you like to have equity? Sure. Like entrepreneurs aren't great at investing in the stock market or in their portfolios or in their 401k. We build businesses because businesses can be sold in the future. You can't sell that. Number two, you can't build an affiliate business that is that specific and, and that like, so therefore you're going to be the monkey see monkey do marketer, right? Okay. You're going to be out there. I have a, I have a, a screenshot on my phone of the ad, the high level put out there that says 200 new features. You're going to be the 200 new features guy. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. And, 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 and it, you it'll eat you up in time. Do. Sure. Yeah, you will learn exact, you will learn all of the answers. If you join MVP, mm -hmm. the first three weeks, you'll never wonder about crap like that again. Okay. Because it's always like, you know, if you were to ask somebody that had done what you did, the best question, I think the best question might be something like, what question should I ask? Because you never ask the right questions. Right. And whenever I see people trying to like pull things off the shelf to create an offer, they're like grabbing, well, I'll put miss call text back. I'm going to put that in there. Uh, right. And I'm going to put in like review management. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to like, I'm doing all of these things. I'm going to put this in this basket. And then when I go to the client, I'll say, look at my basket. They're going to be like, I could give a rat's ass about your basket. I got to go run my business. Right. And so what you're saying is as an affiliate marketer, you're going to get people inspired and excited about building a high level platform. You don't even want to do it. You just said so. Sure. Sure. Because yeah. it's complex because of sub accounts, because of this, right. Yeah. The, the, the key is to have something that is easy to set up is not complex mm -hmm. removes all of the, because they don't want your features. They want an outcome. Right. So all of yes. the things that don't, oh, thank you, Tammy. Um, all of the things that don't, I'll read through that in just a second. All the things that don't help or, or fix or like go in that direction are a distraction, no. right? And if you can focus on one person and one outcome and you just drive towards that and anytime your brain says, oh, I should do this too. You say, shut the hell up brain. And you yeah. follow the program and you just build the thing simple then you can be like I was last year when I was sitting in Hawaii and my sister, Heather, who's actually the director of operations of was the director of operations in my company. And now is the administrator of MVP, she ran my entire agency as a part-time stay at home mom. Nice. I didn't have to do anything. She ran it and she learned the business from the ground up. So uh, yeah. Tammy said, Week one to three is research. Week four is GHL, GHL agency account set up. Uh, week five, legal stuff and email warm up. Uh, week six, building your ads library. Week seven, GHL client setup. Uh, week eight, uh, onboarding SOPs. You guys would pay me 2000 bucks just for that. Uh, and then week nine, get clients and website building. You'd pay me 10 grand for that because, I mean, I make getting clients for you so much easier.
right? You don't sell clients, you advise them, right? You advise them to close. And by the time they get done, they're like, you have spoken so much to my exact situation. Guess what you must know? How to solve it. That's what you must know. So everything then becomes a decision. And you guys now it's decision time. All right? Uh, Richard, it's, it's, it's on demand. You can take it whenever you want to. Okay? But you don't get access to me unless you're an MVP. All right? And unless you're in the beta, eventually that will go away. All right. All right. Mike is in. You guys, thank you. This has been awesome. I've had a ton of fun. I've gotten to know a couple of new people. I feel like, Robert, I've seen you around digitally for a very long time. So it's awesome to put a name and a voice to your face. Uh, Will, awesome to have you in. Harry, I hope you join. I've seen you in our other uh, meetings. Uh, Tammy, you're the best. Thank you as always. Olivia, you got to get in. For everybody that showed up, my all my MVP people, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, I'm sure there's other people on the other pages. Um, this has been a ton of fun and rock and roll hoochie I will look in my email right now, give you guys access and sayonara, suckers. Have a good day. Thank you.